Well, 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 it's Saturday the 19th of June. This is episode 2124 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited by me at the JMO. In 2019, I made an episode on depression about how poorly served we are by the English language when it comes to communicating our interior states. We often lack exact words to articulate what we are feeling. What's the word for when you feel like you are disappearing? One solution may be to poetically suggest a concept by placing words in relation to one another. Despite it being a big part of my life, I realised recently that I don't talk about meditation as much as I thought on the podcast. The main reason being that meditation is ultimately a boring subject. It's sitting in a chair, day after day, dealing with your own shit in silence. I could talk about it more, but why bother? Anyways, in episode 2002, Crying Whilst Meditating, I described how your body processes old buried emotions that you had no idea that you'd been carrying around. Today, I want to briefly talk about the importance of being able to recognise and name specific feelings that you are experiencing. As one of the things that meditating on old trauma reveals is the smaller emotions that you experience at the same time as part of the big one, like sorting through beads in a bowl or untying a complex knot. Moments of psychic intensity generate what we can think of as big feelings that we then carry around with us as unprocessed loops that keep us awake at night. Let's take a time when you were angry as an example. In the first, the anger was somatically experienced, a tensing of muscles, a clenching of the jaw, an increase in heart rate, an increase in the rate of breathing, a rise in blood pressure. Maybe you went red in the face. Your attention narrowed and you were mentally locked on target. It lasted five or 10 minutes maximum, And it is this narrowing of attention during emotional intensity that creates the psychic baggage that you carry around with you. I should note that this narrowing of attention could be anything from an argument with a partner to someone cutting in front of you in a line. When you meditate, the technique that I was taught, on, for example, a time when you've been angry, what slowly is revealed are all the other emotions that occurred at the same time, the beads in the bowl. Like the elements of an exploding star, As you pick the experience apart, you find the other emotions in the original experience's orbit. There's ire, annoyance, maybe there's disgust, anxiousness, regret, maybe a little fright. Eventually, that big emotion, that psychic wound that you've been carrying around for half your life is unpacked and recontextualized. The unpacking is done by sitting on a chair by yourself in silence and re-experiencing the original emotional moment. This isn't some unhealthy dwelling on the past, a quiet seething as it's time-bound and limited to the time that you are sitting. When you are done meditating, you set it aside and get on with the rest of your day. If you do keep coming back to it, you should probably consider getting a therapist, because despite what an app says, all meditation is dangerous. Anyways, what happens month by month is that the time your mind likes to remind you of in the middle of the night wasn't all anger. Maybe it was made up of frustration, depression, and a little resentment too. All these were lost in the initial explosion of adrenaline, Eventually, as you more fully understand the memory, it becomes too complex for the mind to pick up and throw at you just before sleep. I'm not going to explain how you do any of this, as I said, it's really rather boring. But the main thing is this type of meditation on old trauma allows you to do is to more fully understand emotions when you come across them in your daily life. You become better equipped to understand what you are feeling and experiencing. For example, imagine being on Zoom. Someone says something that elicits an emotion in you a slight leadening of the fingertips, and a tingle that runs from the throat across the chest and down into the spine. These sort of things happen to you a million times a day, but you usually don't pay attention to them. You're too caught up with formulating your response. If you can discern the experience of the small emotions clearly, you can pick out that touch of annoyance and the dash of irritation, and usually you'll know why. And then you can note them down on the D&D character sheet of life and move on. I'm not claiming that meditation stops you from experiencing emotions. In fact, it's the exact opposite. The more you do, the more you become aware of the things that you are feeling. Knowing exactly what kind of anxiety you are experiencing doesn't stop it from grabbing you by the throat in the soy sauce aisle in Sainsbury's. But it does give you a better understanding of the you that is doing the experiencing.